back to helicopter lessons in 10 minutes or less. I'm Jacob and this video is part two of the SIFT uh, test prep videos where I outline modules five through seven. Now if you haven't seen part one where I outline the first four modules, I recommend watching that first to get caught up. And if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. That said, let's get back to it. Now module five covers reading comprehension. All right, so for reading comprehension, you're gonna be allocated 30 minutes to complete 20 questions. <clears throat> the purpose of this section is to see how well you can understand a topic and the critical details from a paragraph. Just like if you were to receive a mission order, uh, you should be able to read and understand what the mission is, as well as things like the who, what, where, when, why uh, questions that coincide with that mission. So let's take a look at an example from the practice test. So question number four, um, is asking you what can you infer from the paragraph. So we'll just read through it. So don't attempt to fly through thunderstorms. Try to safely and wisely circumnavigate them. Know your personal skills and limitations regarding weather, flight, before you gather forecast information. Keep in mind that a variety of conditions in flight can change quickly. Don't fly into areas of rain where the air temperature is at or close to freezing. Always allow more margin of error for weather at night, and do not attempt to navigate through cloud holes. Now, what it's asking us is to infer what we can from the paragraph. Do we understand the paragraph? Um, in this uh, instance, what, uh, what best sums it up? So if I were to look through all the answers here, A, flying in inclement weather involves using sound judgment. Yeah, I can agree to that. That sounds plausible, but let's go ahead and read through the rest. B, thunder thunderstorms are not navigable. Well, that's just not true. Uh, it told us, told us you can uh, don't fly through them, but you can circumnavigate them. Uh, changing conditions will lead to flight trouble. Eh, that's pretty ambiguous. I don't know if that's going to be a good answer. Question D, or uh, answer D, freezing rain can be managed if the pilot knows what he's doing. Uh, that is accurate, but only addresses one of the supporting sentences in the paragraph, not the paragraph as a whole. Um, e, flying is or flying at night is tricky. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, but it's ambiguous, and it's not really addressing the paragraph as a whole. It's kind of picking a sentence out of the paragraph. So I'd say out of all of those, flying in inclement weather involves using sound judgment gives the best, um, you know, paraphrasing of what the paragraph is. What is the, you know, the meaning behind the paragraph? That's ultimately what this reading comprehension section wants you to be able to do. Now, other questions may ask you to infer like a word meaning. So number five, uh, infer the meaning of the word in bold. So what is the word acumen used? and it gives you a paragraph and it says, what do you think it means? Um, so it's wanting you to understand, you know, what's going on here. If you look at say question number 10, it's looking for cause effect. So if this causes this, this causes this, do you understand what the paragraph's telling you? Ultimately, uh, you need to practice these types of questions, understand why the correct answer is what it is. Um, and the more you practice, the better you get. Uh, you just gotta go through these things and read them. All right, moving on to the next module is gonna be module number six, and this is gonna be math skills. Uh, for this section, you're gonna have 40 minutes, and it's gonna be a variable amount of questions. I'll kind of go into that in a minute. But if you haven't looked at basic math since high school, I would highly stress to get a study guide out or watch some uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube tutorials on math before taking the SIFT. If you haven't used these skills recently, odds are you're probably pretty rusty. And oh, by the way, the test is meant to be completed without a calculator. Um, so 40 minutes, a variable amount of questions. That means that there's not a set number of questions, but it tends to repeat the areas that you're weak on to get a, uh, a good assessment. So let's take a look at what this, uh, what this section looks like. So if I'll open up to uh, here, you're gonna see it's gonna cover everything from, you know, this has a good test prep prior to the practice questions, but going through the practice questions and just kind of perusing through, it's gonna cover everything from integers, decimals, Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponents, factors, fractions, percentages, algebraic functions, linear equations. Uh, let's see, there are some word problems, geometry, Pythagorean theorem, more. Uh, there's too many questions to actually go through each one of them, but I would just recommend get the study manual, practice it, look up some videos if you get stumped on it. Luckily, this section it had a study uh, section before it, practiced questions and then answer explanations it tells you why the answers were what they were, which is great for trying to figure out why you were wrong if you missed one. Um, but don't let this uh, section discourage you. If you haven't uh, uh, 
done your math stuff in a while or you're weak at math, just get the study guides out, practice, you'll knock off the rust and just build these skills back to uh, where they need to be. All right, so the final module is going to be uh, mechanical comprehension. All right, for this section, you're gonna have 15 minutes and it's gonna be another uh, variable amount of time to um, a very amount of questions. So much like the last section, there's no set number of questions, but the test will keep giving uh, questions to get an adequate assessment of where you stand. Now the goal of this section is to assess how well you can predict what will happen in a mechanical system. It's not necessarily getting into the math skills, it's more like do you understand what's going on in the picture and can you kind of predict what's going to happen. All right, so the first few uh, questions kind of look like this. We'll pull up the uh, study section. All right, so the practice question, uh, this first one um, is asking you to um, calculate kind of distances or times, but it's more so of a conversion question. So a car is traveling at constant velocity of 25 meters a second. How long does it take the car to travel 45 kilometers in a straight line? So this is looking at questions like, hey, a convoy is moving along a road and it's moving at this rate of speed and it needs to get this location or, you know, how much distance can it cover in this amount of time? It wants to see, do you have this basic application of like a mechanical system and this one it's not necessarily math it's just converting um, getting into some of the other ones you're going to see um, diagrams you're going to see things like um, uh, more distances times you're going to see velocity angular velocity uh, you're going to see things like springs uh, gears pulleys pendulums uh, different amounts of weight um, and how that shifts things around uh, newton's laws of motion um, hydraulics, uh, changes to volume, um, and really more. Um, this is really just seeing like how well of a mechanical background or understanding do you have of, of these type of systems. Um, ultimately, I would practice this uh, in the study guides. Once again, this is great because it's got explanations as to why the answers are the way they are, as well as a study guide at the front of it. But that wraps up the seven modules. Um, it generally takes, once again, two and a half to uh, three hours to get through the test. Uh, but let's get to some of the scoring. Um, getting into the scoring, <clears throat> the Army hasn't actually disclosed how it weighs each section, but it has said that uh, what scores you typically can get. Now, the test is said to be uh, compensatory and that if you do well in one section, it can compensate for a low score in another. Uh, but that said, the scores range anywhere from 20 to 80. Uh, with the minimum being 40, and the uh, uh, the average is right around 50. Um, now, there's no score that guarantees you're going to get accepted into flight school, but there is uh, more of a factor for a selection board that, you know, the higher your score is, the better your chances. So always shoot for the highest score. Um, based on the comments in this channel, uh, a lot of people that score in the 60s seem to have a high pickup rate. Um, if you have taken this test, once again, um, I recommend leave a comment below, say what you did to prep for it, um, what your score was, so that way other people can kind of ask what you did and kind of open up this as a forum. Um, lastly, some notes about the test is it's always subject to change, so always make sure you get the current study guides. Um, also, the Army limits you to taking this twice, uh, or this test twice ever. Um, so if you ever take it, take it seriously because you only get two shots. And by the way, if you take it, you have to wait 181 days before you can take the test again uh, for a retest. And then after that, you're done. So take it seriously the first time. Um, that wraps up part two of this. Um, below the video, I'll list the uh, links to the study guides. I'd recommend um, checking those out. Honestly, the more practice tests you take, the better your chances of success. Take them. Take all of them. Practice. Just get as best uh, of a score you can going in the first time so you don't have to rely on that second time. Um, Stay tuned for the next video where I'll outline uh, SIF test taking strategies. As always, I'm Jacob and this has been Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. Safe flying.